Today on The Spot, we've got Neversoft stopping by with Guitar Hero 5's new jam session mode. We're also going to show you what's new on Xbox Live this week, take a look at Scribblenauts on the DS, check in with Jody Robinson's Community Spotlight, see Zachary Quinto saving arcades, give even more free stuff away, and we'll take one last look and say goodbye to Gamescom. All that and more today on The Spot. Hey everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot. I'm your host Chris Waters. With me again is my man Lark Anderson. What's up dude? Not much Chris, just a ton of video games this week. Yeah, well talk to me about what you're playing. Uh, playing some Batman Arkham Asylum. Just love doing those inverted takedowns, stringing thugs up, it's super fun. Yes. And uh, just uh, actually wrapped up with Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Um, there are no matchstick puzzles in that game because those things were the devil. Thank goodness, yeah, those were not uh, my forte. Yeah, uh, I've been playing Trials HD a lot recently. It came out a few weeks ago, but I just can't stop striving for that shaved a little bit extra off my time and uh, compete against all the guys around here. Yeah, everyone in the office seems addicted to that game. It's true, it's been a while we've been going at it. But my friend, that is old news. And we want to get something fresher, so we're going to throw it over to Tor Thorson at the news desk. Take it away, Tor. Oh, hello. This is your GameSpot News Update for Thursday, August 27th. I'm Tor Thorson. Well, surprise, Microsoft has finally, officially, and absolutely confirmed the Xbox 360 Elite has been reduced to $300. The matte black console will basically be the same as when it was $400, though now you'll have to spring for those HDMI cables all by yourself. And remember kids, Wi-Fi is still going to cost you $100 extra. Also true, the Xbox 360 Pro is going bye-bye. Now priced at $250, the last great white console to have a hard drive is expected to be out of stock by New Year's Eve. So if you have a white AV setup or just plain racist, now's the time to buy. Finally, the Xbox 360 Arcade is staying put at $200 and remains the cheapest console on the market. Or at least until Nintendo comes to its senses and cuts the Wii's price. Which should happen anytime now, Mr. Iwata. Anytime. In other news, the once mighty Maxis has been hit by layoffs. While Sport Hero for the DS and Wii remains on track for October, the studio which created the whole Sims craze has been downsized by owner Electronic Arts. The move comes four months after Maxis founder Will Wright quit EA to help found the so-called entertainment think tank, Stupid Fun Club. That's not to be confused with Fight Club, The Breakfast Club, or The Women's Murder Club. And it's amazing what you can do when you have more money than God. Well, that's it. Your GameSpot News update for Thursday, August 27th. For more headlines like these, head over to news.gamespot.com. All right, thanks a lot, Tor. Now that's one show since our last news place execution. Let's hope Tor's turning over a new leaf. Now it's time once again to check in what's new this week on Xbox Live. This week on Xbox Live. There were lots of additions including a new demo for Wet, an over-the-top action game featuring a stylish but lethal heroine named Ruby Malone. Ruby packs two pistols and a fancy sword on her back and she knows how to use them. When leaping in midair, sliding on the ground, or wall running, you'll be able to slow time down temporarily whenever you find Ruby's guns. One pistol is always auto-aiming at an enemy, giving you a chance to focus on the second bad guy in order to take them down simultaneously. When things get up close and personal, Ruby can deliver strikes with her sword, which cuts down enemies with style, and style matters a great deal in WET. Killing enemies with a flourish will earn points that you can use to cash in for weapons and ability upgrades at the end of the level. New demos since we reported back last week also include NHL 10, which is currently scheduled for release on September 15th. The demo on Xbox Live lets you practice your skills, take the puck out on the ice, and get used to the game's controls. Fans of the NHL series should definitely take a moment to download this one. Also new is a demo for Dirt 2. While maybe not one suited for racing simulation purists, Dirt 2 certainly looks to offer a lot of fun and looks to improve upon the original. In the Indie Game section, you'll find a new game with a blurry cover image and Japanese text for its title. Turns out, it's pretty much a port of the classic Super Dodgeball called Downtown Smash Dodgeball. While the gameplay is simply jumping and throwing a virtual rubber ball on the 360 for one to two players, it's a ton of fun for fans who play the original. Also new in the Indie Game section is Storage Inc, which goes for 400 Microsoft points. The game is a cooperative arcade puzzler for 1-4 to four local players with 100 maps, all for co-op support. Last but not least, full games out of this week include Burnout Revenge and Need for Speed Pro Street. Both available for download in their entirety for $19.99. Well, that's your look at some of the highlights hitting Xbox Live this week. We'll see you next time. 
All right, so there's a look at some of the new stuff that's available on Xbox Live Marketplace. Now, Lark, last week we were here and we talked a lot about Germany. Right, we had a huge show over there called Gamescom. It's brand new, but it's now the biggest show in Germany, or in Europe, actually. In Europe? That's big. It's huge. It's big, but it's now over. It's over now, yeah. We had coverage all the way through the weekend. Some news stories are still going up for it. But now that our boys are actually back from Germany, we've cut together a great clip to show you how awesome it actually was. So why don't we take a look at that right now? Hey everybody, it is morning in Cologne, Germany, and behind me are thousands of fans eagerly streaming into Gamescom, which is the single biggest games convention in all of Europe. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to walk inside there, check out the show floor, and see some of the games that they've got on display. So let's get right to it. We're starting our tour with Activision. Right now we're at the DJ Hero area, and they've got these little pods set up to really get that dance club feel. You can get on the turntables, have a cute girl dance along for you, and really get into the mood. So there's DJ Hero. Let's check out another Activision game you might have heard of. Here's another game Activision has coming out. It's called Modern Warfare 2. I don't know if you've heard of it, but apparently Germany has, because, well, look at this line. Now here we are taking a look at what Microsoft has to offer. Now one of the highlights of this booth is definitely Forza 3. This is a game that was just announced a couple months ago and it's already playable by the show floor public. And not only that, but they've also got these pretty amazing little cockpit seats where they're sitting in a real racing seat and they've got a three monitor setup to get that full extent of the cockpit view, which is new in Forza 3. There's also some Halo 3 ODST and some lips. So Microsoft definitely bringing some good games here. Okay, so here we are at the Sony area of the show floor, and I don't know if there's any publisher taking up quite as much real estate here as Sony is. They've got everything. They've got a bunch of big games behind closed doors, but out on the public area, they've got all kinds of playable stuff, like this Gran Turismo 5 setup, where you can get in an actual Audi and control the game from there. They've also got Little Big Planet PSP and a whole lot of SingStar. Another big thing is that they've got the PSP Go playable on the show floor. These aren't even out in stores yet, and anybody who wants to get their hands on one can do it right here. Well, as you can tell from all that SingStar, they love their rhythm games here in Germany, and nothing makes that more obvious than this giant stage for Def Jam Rap Star. It's quite a spectacle, but there's a lot left to see, so let's keep it rolling. Now here's a treat for you MMO fans. Right behind me, they're giving guided demos of Final Fantasy XIV online. The demo's in German, so I can't really tell what's going on, but I'm pretty sure there's a chocobo involved. Right now, we've got a really great view of the show floor up here on the Beatles Rock Band stage, where they're playing a few songs over there with the all-new Beatles hardware. And as you can see, there's quite a lot. He's not selling this right. All right, so we are at the Beatles Rock Band stage right now, and it is popping off severely. We've had bands up here all day. It's been totally awesome. If you're at the games convention right now, which you probably aren't because you're watching this, that would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. You should come in here, get in line. We'll give you stickers. You get free t-shirts if you come up. It is friggin' off the chain right now. I can't believe I just used that phrase. Well, there you have it. A quick roundup of the show floor of Gamescom 2009. For more coverage, including previews, video interviews, and photos of the entire event, Take a look at gamescom.gamespot.com. Now, if you don't mind, I'm pretty exhausted. I need to go home. Which way is America? Lots of cool stuff coming out of Gamescom, but we've got some cool stuff for you right here in our offices. Man, we had these developers come by the other day to give us the inside scoop on one of the most anticipated games for the DS this year. Perhaps you've heard of it, Scribble Knots. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Jeremiah Salaska. I'm the co-founder and creative director of Facel. So with Scribblenauts, we really try to balance the game with um, making sure that all objects, you know, are not about like a super object. Instead, you know, we're making sure that you know all the flying objects are very similar and stuff, so that you know people can experiment and have a lot of fun. And with the challenge levels themselves, um, the best part about it was that they're so unique and different. You know, in one level, you know, you're you're helping a kid break a pinata, and another level, you know, you're fighting a dragon. And um, because of that, you know, you're always using a different tool set for each level. So you're really using your imagination and really kind of expanding your vocabulary in the process. We had five people for six months and all they did was uh, 
uh, just look for words in on dictionaries and Wikipedia's and encyclopedias and even you know the world around them but um, I mean they're only five people right so it's like the internet was like well do they have this and do they have that and I mean we would just have people going through forums and checking and saying well uh, I think we have this and they would just check all these I and mean, people actually made lists like there was threads on forums that just were just lists of words and like they were like yes thanks this is great and it makes the game better it's like it makes the game better not only it helps us but it helps the player because it's going to be a better user experience yeah I mean the hype train is crazy on this game and uh, it's kind of weird because we never perpetuated it you know we were never like yeah you know this game's awesome we just kind of showed up at e3 and people just started going with it and ever since then the same thing and people are like you know is this game the next game of all games is the game of the century and it's like i don't know you, know, you make your own decision on it like it's up to you it's like we're not we're not touting it as that and um you know we don't know what people's like final reactions are going to be but i mean so far everybody's always had really positive reactions they always had fun with it so everybody who's played it has definitely had fun with it Right now we're just focused on the DS, so you know that's kind of where everything's leading right now. Um, in the future, maybe who knows? It really depends on the success of the original. Like if the success of the original does well, um, then there'll, there'll most likely be sequels. I mean, like John to Life, you know, it's like that sold over a million units, and obviously there became sequels. And we worked on the, the sequel to that on the DS, so it all depends on that really. So uh, Scribble Notes comes out September 15th. Uh, it's going to be on the DS. You can get it at your local game stores, and if you pre-order it at GameStop, you can get this. All right, man, that Scribblenauts game is looking cool. Lark, have you had a chance to play that yet? Oh yeah, yeah, I got my hands on it at E3 and a little bit afterwards, did some crazy stuff with it, gave God Excalibur, had him fight Cthulhu, um, had griffins and, and manticores fight. Myths, so like myth, mythical battles with epic beings. Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I killed some fish with a depth charge. You gotta work on your imagination, bro. I, yeah, apparently that is true. Uh, all right, that's enough Scribblenauts for now. Let's turn our attention to more pressing matters, i.e. rock and roll. Uh, Guitar Hero 5, anybody heard of it? It's coming out next week, and we had Neversoft come by the studio, give us a live demo yesterday, so we're gonna go check a look at that segment right now. Hey everyone, Brian Eckberg here. We're talking about Guitar Hero 5. I'm joined by Travis Chan of Neversoft, and we're gonna show you guys a few new things you can do to, to actually make some music in Guitar Hero 5, right? Yeah. Awesome, well Travis, welcome to the show. Let, let's check out GHGM. Okay. Well, GH Jam, like I said, is for anyone, no mm -hmm. matter their musical expertise, to just jump in, create, start creating great sounding songs mm -hmm. from the get-go. So the, the user's first presented with 14 different styles. And these styles span all different sorts of genres. Mm -hmm. So we have classic rock, punk rock, we even have some more unconventional styles like hip-hop, electro, and even chip tunes. Cool. So we'll just jump right into blues, because that's a great example for improvisational, that improvisational feeling you get when you play music, right? right. Yeah, so, the style sets me up with the perfect sounding instruments, mm -hmm. the perfect sounding effects, I'm in the right scale, and it also gives me backing tracks to the theme of the style that I pick. Okay. So I'm just going to select lead guitar, and it's really improvisation, can't really do anything wrong here. Okay. I'm just playing notes. Now the new thing we have this year is the expressive strum feature, okay. which allows you to touch the touch strip mm -hmm. and provide expression to the note. So it's not just playing the note, it's you know sliding the note, uh. tremoloing the note, bending the note, sliding between notes. And these are the things that guitarists use to provide that dynamic quality to their parts that sure. wasn't there in Guitar Hero World Tour. So you can do this in GH Jam, just having fun, and you can also perfect your songs in GH Mix using those expressive uh, strum features. So let me jump right into GH Mix. Now GH Mix was in the last game, but we've really completely redesigned the mode for Guitar Hero 5, based on a lot of feedback that we got from the Guitar Hero community. Okay. Um, so the first thing the user will see is a much more intuitive and easy to use interface. Um, it's a lot more inviting, and it dramatically reduces the amount of time it takes to create a song. Cool. One of the new modes we added this year is pattern mode. What pattern mode allows you to do is paste down patterns, just like building blocks. Mm -hmm. We have over 400 of these preset patterns that you can use throughout your song. So I'm just gonna build up a really basic song right now by pasting some of these patterns down. Okay. And this is just really a simple song creation process. And you know, I can, I don't have to use the patterns. I can, I can make my song from scratch step and make step. that, yeah. you know, crazy Dragon Force-like song. Right, right. But this is a good intro course, basically. So we're back in note mode where I actually see the notes on screen, right? We've done a lot this year to improve the sound quality, too. Mm -hmm. um, 
We've done this in multiple ways. We've professionally re-recorded all of our samples across all instruments. Okay. Um, we also allow you to provide that expression to individual notes. Mm. So I can change the notes, how it's bent, how it's tremoloed, and also change how hard or how soft the note is hit. Um, we also have great Line 6 effects, um, which is a real effects company. Mm -hmm. They make real guitar hardware effects modules. And so this year we've partnered with them, and you can actually switch effects mid-track, so if you want that clean to dirty sound. Right. Or um, you can also assign effects to any track, so if you want a crazy industrial drum, you can do that. All right, well, uh, let's, uh, let's get we're getting close to wrapping it up, so why don't okay. we take a look at the chip tunes real quick, uh, and then we'll... Um... Okay, so let's jump out of GH Mix. So we'll jump right into the, uh, the chip tune style. You're gonna play us off with chip tunes. Playing you off with chip tunes. All right. And chip tunes, of course, are like lo-fi, 8-bit lo sounds, right? Lo-fi, 8-bit sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Made with old computers, circuit bent toys. And, you, and we should point out that all the backgrounds differ depending on the style, Exactly. Right? So it gives you a nice visual aura for that style that you're playing, and they respond to what you're playing. All right, well, there you go. There's a look at uh, the GH Studio, GH Jams, and all that good stuff. Travis, when is Guitar Hero 5 coming out? That's September 1st. Right around the yep. corner. All right, well, I'm thanks. looking forward to downloading everybody's songs. Yeah, absolutely, as are we. Thanks for being here, Travis. Hey, and uh, if you want to know more about Guitar Hero 5, check it out on the Game Space at GameSpot. On Tuesday, GameSpot community manager Jody Robinson stopped by the show, talked about how you can interact with the show and about this new video segment she's going to be debuting called Community Spotlight. Well, it's that time. Let's see who made the cut. Hey there, this is Jody Robinson, GameSpot's community manager. In this week's Community Spotlight, we'll show off the new Game Hero brackets, reveal our downloadable content reviews, and more. Let's get started. With the amount of time we play as Game Heroes, have you ever wondered which one was the greatest of all time? GameSpot's Game Heroes features allows you to do just that. You now have the opportunity to manage your own brackets based on your votes. Drop by the features page for more details. If game battles aren't your thing, what about the latest downloadable content for PlayStation 3 or Xbox Live? We recently started reviewing this content, so why not provide your own? Do a search for Fallout 3 as an example to get started. Well, if none of that got you excited, emblems always do. We now have an emblem for the best screenshot caption author of the week. Why not give a screenshot caption a try? Drop by the features page for more details. Lastly, a quick shout out to our member spotlight of the week. Samson0894 has blog about demo factors in comparison to steak and appetizers. I think he might have been hungry while writing his blog. Make sure you eat a snack before writing your blogs. That's all for this week's Community Spotlight. Drop by the Spam Filter News blog for more details. All right, folks, now it's time to go on location to one of our favorite local arcades, Starbase One in San Rafael, which is part of a campaign to save the arcades. Let's take a look. If you think classic video game arcades are a dying breed, you'd be correct and the ones that remain are in danger. Many are in need of help. And that's where Stride comes in with Save the Arcades, a nationwide campaign to stop the disappearance of our beloved and endangered form of gaming. Their efforts have already helped save Philadelphia's Challenge Arcade by providing them with $10,000 to help them through this tough economic time. Saving more arcades is the primary goal. Stride has pledged that they will donate $25,000 to one of four endangered arcades around the country, including Starbase Arcade, Star Worlds Arcade, Game Galaxy, and Arcade UFO. The score you achieve from playing Zapator, a game you can find at SaveTheArcades.com, can be donated to your arcade of choice. The one with the most points on October 9th will be awarded the $25,000 prize. To play Zapator, simply visit SaveTheArcades.com and donate your score, which will then be added to the arcade's total point score. While the registration on the page is a minor hassle to get through, and the game could be better, it is for a good cause. So if you have the time to spare, play a quick round and donate your points. We spoke to Bob, owner of Starbase Arcade, and here's what he had to say. In the last uh, decade or so, the arcades have really fallen by the wayside with all the great home systems and everything. And I strongly believe that uh, my children and their children should have a few places left where they can come congregate and worship the silver coin. With people like Zachary Quinto, star of the Heroes TV series and Star Trek film, heading the movement, 
you can see why saving these iconic places is getting some attention. You know, arcades to me represent a notion of uh, an old school connection and a place where people can go and uh, especially kids can go and, and be safe and, uh, and have an opportunity to connect with other like-minded people. Help preserve this classic form of gaming by visiting SaveTheArcades.com today. All right, it's that time once again, but today, instead of testing your trivia knowledge, we're going to test your gaming ability. On Tuesday, lucky winner Charles Pearson Jr. was one of the ones who wrote in correctly and received a copy of Batman Arkham Asylum. And today's winners will receive either a Guitar Hero 5 t-shirt, guitar strap, or mouse pad. So, let us know which one you want by writing in to onthespot at gamespot.com and include your contact information, as well as a screenshot of you scoring at least 25,000 points in Zapatar, the game on SaveTheArcades.com. The key here is you need to score at least 25,000 points and donate it to Starbase Arcade. Lucky winners will receive one of these fantastic items. And keep in mind there's a small registration process. It's really easy, kind of a pain, but you know what? It's for a good cause. You can win some cool stuff. Oh, and pro tip, Orangutar is the way to go. The spread banana attack, it'll get it done. All right, that's about it for today, folks. Any last words before we go? Right, Chris, be sure to check out the Greatest Game Hero Competition. It's live now. Make your bracket. Voting starts on September 1st. Get those brackets in, folks. All right, for everyone here at GameSpot, I'm Chris Waters. And I'm Lark Anderson. We'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> They're not... <laughs> at, anyways, that, co that came to an end. Yeah? That came to an end. And, and uh, now that our boys are back, we've actually got a great clip. <laughs> Sweet! Clip time! Boom! Blowing up your clip spot. <laughs>